Hi, welcome uh, to this video. We're going to develop now the problems and applications 6 to 10 of Principles of Economics, Chapter 28, and Employment. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw. So the sixth question says, are the following workers more likely to experience short-term or long-term unemployment? Explain. A construction worker who is laid off because of bad weather. Well, we assume here that bad weather is not going to be a structural issue, so definitely in the short run, this person, the construction worker, will find a new job. So it should, should be like short term. B. A manufacturing worker who loses his job at a plant in an isolated area. So in this case, we are assuming that this is an isolated area. So this person uh, belongs to the manufacturing plant, for example, and nearby, this person cannot find easily another job. So, we're th we can think of long-term situation. C. A stagecoach industry worker who is laid off because of competition from the railroads. Well, because more people they will travel now in the train, so we can assume here in long term, because maybe more buses, they're not going to be required as before, so definitely should be some structural change. A short order cook who loses his job when a new restaurant opens across the street. Well, you can assume that the new restaurant uh, is going to um, is going to take all the all the jobs, or they are going to bring all workers. If if the maybe the first case that they are going to open new position, maybe we can think that a uh, short term. If they are now they have already all the people that they will work in the restaurant, maybe we can think more about long term. Next, an expert weather with little formal education who loses his job when the company installs automatic welding machinery. Well, it's something that is happening. Uh, at this time, a lot of people, they are losing their jobs and people that they don't have like more, um, maybe more qualified, uh, maybe professional background is going to be like kind of harder to find a new job. So this could be the case and then could be a long term situation. Seven. Using a diagram of the labor market showed the effect of an increase in the minimum wage on the wage paid to workers. The numbers, the number of workers supplied, the number of workers demanded, and the amount of unemployment. So here we have the, the wage and here we have the L, the amount of labor. Here we have the supply, which is provided by the workers, and the demand by the companies. So when we assume that a minimum wage is making any change in the market should be above the equilibrium point. So then this should be the above the equilibrium and in this case what's going on? We have here the LS which implies the, the supply of the labor provided by the people at this price. However, at this price is not complete um, taken by the demand by the company so there is a gap. So this gap, uh, well this gap is, is what we know as unemployment. And if we have here an increase in the minimum wage, what happened automatically is like the more people are interested in working. However, at this price of this level of the wage, the, uh, the amount of the, the, the labor that is going to be demanded by the company should be naturally lower. So we have here the L prime D. So then the unemployment increased. So here we have this one, um, uh, more people they, they supply the supply more the workers and the demand uh, here actually should be should be lower this should be not higher and then this should be the u prime u1 which should be the level of unemployment first and then the second level should be higher than the first one H. Consider an economy with two labor markets, one for manufacturing workers and one for service workers. Suppose initially that neither is unionized. So then, A. If manufacturing workers formed an, a union, what impact would you predict on the wages and employment in manufacturing? Well, if we are having here that the manufacturing workers, they are forming an union, so they are going to uh, exert kind of, or they are going to make some pressure on the, on the company, so they will try to 
improve the condition that they have. Inside these conditions naturally is involved the value or the wage. So they are trying to get or push for uh, a wage which is higher. So what is going to happen in the manufacturing? The higher minimum wage. It should be a higher one. And then as you know, as we saw in the previous diagram, it will bring higher unemployment. So more people will be interested in working, but less companies, uh, all companies, they will demand less amount of labor. B. How would these changes in manufacturing labor market affect the supply of labor in the market for service workers? What would happen to the equilibrium wage and unemployment in this labor market? So here uh, it should be the situation of the diagram. So here we have a natural the service working. So remember, we are we are assuming that the change is going to be in the manufacturing labor market. So then, due to that, more people that they will be affected for this because they are going to be laid off for manufacturing. So maybe in some way they will move to the service working. So it will bring a higher supply for uh, this the service working. So then, in this case, what is going to happen in the service working, this should be here an increase. Now I'm realizing that this is kind of an assumption, because you can think maybe another way. You can think that due to it's a higher wage provided in the manufacturing, maybe it could be the way that more people from service working, they move to the manufacturing. The point is like the change will be the same. The supply will be higher. The minimum wage doesn't change because it's above the, the equilibrium point and this will bring higher unemployment. Then, nine, the structural unemployment is sometimes said to result from a mismatch between the job skills that employers want and the job skills that workers have. To explore this idea, consider an economy which with two industries auto manufacturing and aircraft craft manufacturing. A. If workers in these two industries require similar amounts of training and if workers at the beginning of their careers can choose which industry to train for, what would you expect to have to happen to the wages in these two industries? How long would this process take? Explain. Well, basically, if we are assuming the, base, the, the same conditions, if we are assuming that this, the salary is going to be exactly the same and the effort that the people they are going to exert uh, in these two careers that's going to be the same, this should be assumed that this, this the wages, they should be actually equal. And then when automatically any disequilibrium exists, what is going to happen? More people will enter to the industry with higher salaries until wages uh, make equal again. B. Suppose that one day the economy opens itself to international trade and as a result starts importing autos and exporting aircraft. What will happen to the demand for the labor in these two industries? Well, in the auto manufacturing, the demand for, the, for workers will decrease and in the air manufacturing, demand will increase. So then, what is, uh, this is what is going to happen. C. Suppose that workers in one industry cannot be quickly retrained for the other. How will this shift in demand affect equilibrium wages both in the short run and in the long run? So I'm going to represent here the situation uh, for this. This is going to be exactly the situation for the short run and the long run for this one. In the short run, what is going to happen actually is like the supply uh, the supply in auto manufacturing will move because people uh, well the first situation actually is going to be exactly exactly this one so then the demand should be should be lower due to the the change that the 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 country opened so then they're going to demand less people and then it's going to be uh, a change because it's going to take time to hire those new people and then the new the new change should be by um, lower supply for workers because they don't have like they will be tempted to go to the aircraft manufacturing as a consequence the first situation was this one the S and D was exactly this one the U1 was the unemployed unemployment and then now we will have S prime and D prime. So then 
it depends on the the change of the movement but still we will going to we are going to face like unemployed okay this should be the, the, the change in the other case we will be like kind of analogous just the demand will increase because you need more labor in order to attend this new market and then the supply should be higher because more people will go to this one as a consequence it's going to be like employee employment exactly could be the same lower higher depending on the movement that you make for your uh, curves then d if for some reason wages fail to adjust to the new equilibrium levels what would occur well actually uh, it's like this one where the minimum wage is above the equilibrium point what is going to happen actually is going to move the unemployment from one sector to another but it's going to be exactly the same when the minimum wage is going to be above the equilibrium point then the order should be 10 Suppose that Congress passes a law requiring employers to provide employees some benefits, such as health care, that raises the cost of an employee by $4 per hour. A. What effect does this employer mandate have on the demand of labor? In answering this and following question, be quantitative when you can. So here is the first situation. Imagine that we have here the supply and the demand, and then we have here the minimum wage over the equilibrium point what is happening it happens usually what is going to happen just the minimum wage will increase in four dollars per hour and as a consequence is going to be a move but take into account some important fact some discouraged workers that they didn't want to work before they are now tempted to do it because of the increase of the salary they say okay my opportunity cost maybe at this time is lower to be at home so I will try to find a job again so for this reason the supply curve can can swift to the right and then as a consequence we have here an increase in unemployment an and increase in the supply curve B if employees place a value on this benefit exactly equal to its cost what effect does the employer's mandate have on the supply of labor okay well as I said before the supply they they, they will try to to move so then the situation should be should be this one a shift to the to the right and then should be just like higher unemployment then the other situation if the wage can freely adjust to balance supply and demand how does this law affect the wage and the level of employment are employers better or worse off are employees better or worse off so the initial point imagine that there is no a minimum wage so is fixed by the market so it should be exactly at this point and then here imagine that there is an increase of four dollars per hour so then this should be the w prime then this one this first triangle it was the the um, the company's surplus okay because of that it's like an like analogous as the demand surplus and then this one should be the the supplier or the provider surplus which in this case should be the workers with an increase what is going to happen now it should be the company surplus this one naturally is lower and this this one this part this one should be exactly like the worker surplus the change okay so then as you can see even I mean both employees and employers they are worse off this um, due to this this issue suppose that before the mandate the wage in this market was three dollars above the minimum wage in this case how does the employer mandate affect the wage the level of employment and the level of unemployment so this one should be the situation we have first this one the minimum wage was uh, uh, at this point because actually the equilibrium was like three dollars above so at this point the minimum wage is not making any travel in the market it's not making any interference because this one is the minimum wage so then it adjusts when supply is exactly equal to the demand when this one is plus four then we have this one plus one 
so then in this one could be an increase of um, unemployment at this part then e now suppose that workers do not value the mandate benefit at all how does this alternative assumption change your answers in part b and c well basically the only thing is now that the supply will not change so then there should be an increase of unemployment i mean uh lower than the previous situation okay i hope it has worth i hope you can understand better the idea as usual please as usual please uh, make your comments something maybe we can make better and as i said it's subtle this maybe could not be like 100 percent uh accurate so it's just like my my opinion so I'm more than open to hear you. Have a great, great day. Bye-bye.